Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanna look at some examples of completing the square outside the setting of solving an equation. And so let's go ahead and jump right in with an example. Here we wanna complete the square for the expression y squared minus six y plus four. So the steps for accomplishing this are gonna be very similar to the steps we use for completing the square when solving an equation. But we just have to remember, we don't have two sides of an equation to work with here. We just have an expression. So all we can do is really add or subtract by zero in fancy ways, or multiply or divide by one in fancy ways. We can't just like do one thing to one side of an equation and do the same thing to the other because we don't have that other side of the equation to work with. And so without going into a total re-derivation of completing the square, remember when we're completing the square, we're trying to exploit the pattern that we get when we expand something like x plus or minus h squared, that always expands to x squared plus or minus 2hx plus h squared. So we're trying to complete the square. We usually focus on like that linear coefficient and that helps us determine the constant term that we need to add in or adjust for. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that to this example here. We want to complete the square for y squared minus 6y plus 4. And so when we're doing this, we think of already having like those first two terms showing up. We have like our x squared and our 2hx usually just that constant term like the h squared is the kind of piece that needs adjustment and working with. So initially we're gonna copy down that y squared and that negative six y. And then what we would really have instead of this plus four here is the correct constant term we need to make this a perfect square trinomial. So we'll think about what that is in a second, but for now let's leave a placeholder or a blank space for that constant term. We still have to keep in mind that we have a plus four here. And eventually we're gonna add a constant term here to make these first three terms a perfect square trinomial, but we can't just add a number to an expression. We can only add zero to an expression without changing what it's representing. So whatever we add in here, we have to subtract away over here to keep things balanced or to really just add by zero in a fancy way. And so now we have to figure out what is the correct constant term that we need right here to make these first three terms a perfect square trinomial. And remember to find that constant term, it's always going back to this pattern and looking at that relationship between the linear coefficient and the constant term. And so that linear coefficient will always have the form of 2h times x. So this number in front of x or y in our case is like two times or negative two times the value for h. So if we take our number in front of our linear term, in this case, negative six, and cut it in half, that'll give us just the number h to work with. So if we take negative six and divide it by two, that gives us that h is equal to negative three. And now that we know h is equal to negative three, we can just square that, and we have found our constant term, and negative three squared is positive nine. So we need to add a positive nine in this blank spot, that makes these first three terms a perfect square trinomial, which guarantees they'll be able to factor as some binomial squared. And then we have to subtract away that constant term we just added in, so it's a minus a nine at the very end. And so we're not done yet, we've just kind of done that preliminary setup, but now we're ready to actually do our factoring to complete the square. These first three terms are now guaranteed to be a perfect square trinomial, and we should be able to see that they will factor as y minus three squared. And then the constant terms at the end here, we just combine and copy down and four minus nine is negative five. So that would be our final answer. That is our original expression, y squared minus six y plus four factored via the process of completing the square. All right, everyone, let's look at another example of factoring by completing the square. And this one's gonna be trickier because now we don't have that leading coefficient of positive one that always makes the problems just a little bit easier to work with. So in this example, we're trying to complete the square for three x squared plus 12 x minus two. And so that pattern we're trying to exploit when we are completing the square, going a binomial squared to a perfect square trinomial, usually starts by thinking about that perfect square trinomial as having just an x squared or leading coefficient of positive one. And so if we do have something other than positive one in front of our x squared, we usually wanna divide or factor it away. And so that's how we're actually gonna start this process, kind of trying to make it look more like this right-hand side over here by dividing away the thing that we don't like, which is that factor of three. And so we could divide everything by three, but when we're completing the square, it's almost always, at least initially, focusing on those first two terms, 
the quadratic and linear term. So we're just gonna factor that out of those first two terms. So if we factor a three out of three x squared, we're gonna be left with x squared. And if we factor a three out of 12 x, we're gonna be left with four x. And so now this is like our x squared plus our two h x term. We're gonna need a blank space for the constant that we need to add in there to make it a perfect square trinomial to exploit that pattern. Um, but then we can't forget the minus two that is in the original expression that's not taken into account yet. Then we're also adding some number in here and we have to balance that out by taking it away outside of these parentheses, but we're not gonna subtract just this number because what happens to this number when we put it in the parentheses is it gets multiplied by three. So we're actually gonna have to subtract away three times that number we put in that blank space. And that's really what makes completing the square a little bit trickier when we're working with an expression that doesn't start with just x squared, but like three x squared, we have to do this extra factoring step and then can't forget about that factor when we're adding in that constant term. Okay, but now we can figure out what that constant term needs to be in parentheses and put it in our blank spaces. And so remember, inside these parentheses, we have our x squared and our 2hx linear term. And so to find h that gives us h squared, we look at that number in front of x. In this case, that is four. So we take that four or that 2h and divide it by two. That gives us just h. And we see that h is equal to two. But the constant term we want here is not just h. We want it to be h squared. So if we square h or do two squared, we get four. That is the constant term we need to add into these parentheses to make this a perfect square trinomial. And that's also the constant term we need to add in outside of here to keep everything balanced. But remember, what we're really adding in outside of the parentheses is three times four. So that's gonna turn into a 12 in our next step. So let's go ahead and write that next step down. So we have three times this quantity that is now guaranteed to be a perfect square trinomial. X squared plus four X plus four. And then outside of these parentheses, we have to combine these constant terms. So we have a negative two and a minus 12, and those will combine together to give us a negative 14 in total. Okay, so this factor of three always just stays out front, but now what we can do with this perfect square trinomial is we can factor it as some binomial squared, exploiting this pattern in green that we always use when we're uh, completing the square. So how do we factor x squared plus four x plus four as some binomial squared? Well, we should find pretty quickly that it factors as x plus two times x plus two or x plus two squared. And this pattern also always immediately helps us find that factored form because if we have our perfect square trinomial and we wanna write it as x plus h or x minus h squared, well, the x is always there. And then we just take that number in front of our linear term, cut it in half, and that's the constant term over here. So four X cut it in half, or really just the constant part, take that four, cut it in half, we get two. So it's X plus two squared. All right, kind of rambling a little bit. Let's finish this example off. Can't forget to bring down that 14. And so here is our final answer. This is our original quadratic polynomial, three X squared plus 12 X minus two, written in a factored form where we have completed the square.